This board's president tried to make enemies with me and my family by filing a false and vexatious complaint against my husband with his employer, the Santa Cruz Police Department. In doing so, you have effectively taken away his right to participate here. This complaint was in direct retaliation for a letter that my husband sent to the Diversity Center regarding Bill Smallman's slurs against the LGBT community. Holly has copies of that letter available to anyone who would like them. This letter was attached to the complaint as evidence of I can't imagine what. I also can't imagine what kind of surreal parallel universe that the taxpayer-funded investigators might have found themselves in when they realized someone was actually complaining about one of their officers for supporting and standing with a persecuted minority community. It is vindictive and indecent to lash out against my husband and Margaret Bruce in retaliation for being horrified by Bill's comments and for speaking out against hate. You insult them both by claiming their reactions were politically motivated and you do an enormous disservice to the LGBT community by trivializing the vileness and bigotry that was at issue. And your draft letter to the press banner certainly does that. The letter is a stunning and shameless attempt at false equivalency. A wise and mature board would be thanking Margaret Bruce for her many years of dedication and service, her many accomplishments, and wishing her well. With respect to the complaint against my husband, I would like the board president to be advised that he is an honorable and courageous person who has served and protected for nearly 15 years. He has received numerous commendations and attended thousands of hours of training, including diversi <coughs> excuse me, diversity and discrimination, racial profiling, tolerance, mental health, crisis intervention, de-escalation, and many more. My husband's letter to the Diversity Center was not his first interaction <coughs> with them, nor was it the first time he has ever stood in support of the LGBT community. <coughs> he reached out and recommended this training because he was already aware of it and knows it is useful and effective. While you have successfully eliminated him from this public forum, you have failed at making us your enemy. I will continue to be here to advocate for environmental issues and to encourage you to treat all of your ratepayers and volunteers with dignity, respect, and appreciation. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, I have a clarifying clarifying question for Jenny. Can I ask a question? Clarifying question? Uh, yes. Um, I'm sorry, was your um, complaint against the board? for a letter that somebody sent about your husband. I'm not sure I followed the chain there of, of events. Mm. I apologize for that, but could you explain what the you're The board president for? submitted a false and vexatious complaint against my husband with his employer, the Santa Cruz Police Department. And, and is it your view that the board was acting on behalf, or the board president was acting on behalf of the board? I believe that she was acting out of retaliation for um, his speaking out against do you hate. believe Do you believe that she was submitting that letter on behalf <coughs> of the board? That is, is there a board statement here? She wasn't submitting it on behalf of the board, no. Well, she's submitting it. I haven't seen the letter, so I don't know what it. Did she the say? The right over did here. Did she that say that she was board? Wrote, but I have not I'm seen. I understand. Did she say she was board president me. of the SLVWD or an interrogation? I, I, I have not. Also you know what? Seen I I think it's I time to end. Okay. I'm trying to figure out if what the board. Uh, the board has. has there's here. no involvement. Okay. Okay. But would like okay. to see the letter at some point. Okay. Uh, anybody else in the audience like to make a comment? No other comments? Okay. So um, we'll go on to uh, the, uh, rep the final reports from uh, the Watershed Education Grant from 2018. Is the environmental program manager will give that report. Yeah. Sure. Um, last year, on May 21st, 2018, the board awarded a number of classic watershed education grants to um, the applicants 
for for um, various watershed education programs. Um, two of them have completed their contracts and they have submitted final reports. They include Jessica Curcio from the from the elementary school science teacher who um, was working on a project called um, uh, Science Night, I believe. <coughs> and they had a number of experiments with erosion, water samples, which they viewed through microscopes and a lot of conservation activities. There were 130 kids that were reached and 99 parents that were on site for the evening. And that was funded um, through the grant. And the second one is the Banana Select String Band for multiple co water conservation and watershed folks performances at multiple schools throughout the San Lorenzo Valley. Um, the, the way the contracts work is we have in the past issued the first 90% of the contract total and then at the end when we receive the final report then we will give them the final 10%. And so in the past the board would accept the final report and then we would issue the 10% of the contract. So we are asking for the board to um, accept the final reports for the two programs, and, and that's all. Okay. Any comments from the uh, <coughs> of those of you in the audience on this issue? Okay. So we need to make a motion. Do I have a motion to uh, motion that we accept the uh, final reports? Okay, a second? Okay, we have a motion and a second, so, Holly. Director Smallman? Aye. Director Falls? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, Letter to the press banner is the uh, next item. Do you uh, want District to? Council will, will take that on. Okay. Um, so you can see that there is a draft letter that I contained in the board packet that was based on the directions provided by the board at the last meeting um, to create a letter for the board's review. Um, if the board wants to make any changes to this, I can uh, pencil them into the draft uh, for submission to the press bear. Okay. And just a question, this would be coming from the entire board? I believe that was the intention. Okay. Um, you might want to make that clear in the signature area. On Lewis Henry, on behalf of the SLVWD board, or something like that, the chair or something. I think there's at least two ways to do it. One would be to say, you know, Lewis Henry board chair on behalf of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District Board of Directors. Another would be to sign it, and of course, there won't be any physical signature, but to say San Lorenzo Valley Board of Directors and then put each of the four directors' names underneath it. Okay. Yeah. I, um, okay. Any? Was that a preference? Yeah, I mean, I think it needs to be a broad okay. statement. I have um, no problem with that. Okay. Okay. Uh, which, which one? Uh, the latter or the former? The latter. The latter. Okay. That'd be great. Uh, so, is there any comments from the ratepayers on this letter? Debbie? Yeah. Um, I appreciate the letter. I appreciate the suggestion that should come from the board. That was also my impression. And a, a further suggestion, just a request, could the district council and the district manager also sign the letter to present the United Front, as this has to do with board policy and uh, district culture? Just a request. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Jenny? I think it's a terrible letter. I don't think you should put it in. I think it's unnecessary, and I think it is, it's done in mean spirit, and it does not honor the years of service 
that Margaret provided to the board, to the ratepayers, uh, to I mean, you guys are not making money at this. And it takes a lot of time and commitment and passion. And I think it's just extremely disrespectful. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Barbara? Barbara Narwell, Ben Lomond. Um, I, I agree with the letter because I believe from uh, things that I've seen that Margaret Bruce has done in past board meetings, she has been disrespectful directly to people's faces as well in social media and has been completely and totally unprofessional and that is not a board director that we want representing this community in this valley. Uh, if, it's, if it's good enough for Bill Smallman, then it's good enough for Margaret Bruce. There's, there's no favoritism being shown here. Okay. Yeah, anyone else? No. Okay. Uh, Bob? I just want to make a, um, a couple of remarks about this. Um, none of this was, has been fun for anybody. And uh, to think that this is being done in some sort of a spiteful way is, is not it at all. This is a letter, in my opinion, at least from my perspective, that is defending the integrity of the board members who were attacked in a social media forum and in a letter to the editor for something that they had absolutely no knowledge about until well after the fact. Um, if the letter and social media posting had stopped at a certain point, that would have been okay. That's free speech and everybody gets to do that, including Margaret Bruce. But for whatever reason, she decided to take it another step. And that is where it, in my opinion, crossed the line. So this is not being done with anything other than deep sadness and regret. And certainly nothing takes away from Ms. Bruce's time on the board. But such attacks and such disparagement have to be addressed. And that's what I think this letter is intending to do. Any other board member have anything to say? No. Again, I'll ask the ratepayers out there, any any other comments? No other comments. Uh, do you have anything to say? I do not. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we adopt this letter with the noted change of um, having it uh, signed by all four board members. That will say San Lorenzo Valley Board of Directors and underneath in uh, <coughs> I can start with the president, vice president, in alphabetical order, director, uh, Smallman and Swan. That'd be great. I'll second. Director Smallman? Aye. Director Pulse? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. President Henry? Yes. So we're going to move on to new business. Um, there's going to be an RFQ um, for a hydrologist. Do you want to talk about that? Uh, I'm out of order. You're, um, out, you're out of order. I'm um, never out of order. order. Um, the district's environmental program manager will give this discussion. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, in November of 2018, Nick Johnson, our longtime hydrologist, um, notified the district that he would no longer be available for consultation for um, hydrogeologic um, professional services. So, um, so we are we have prepared a draft um, request for qualifications to recruit a new hydrogeologist to serve the district as, on an as-needed basis. The things that uh, we expect that will be coming up in the, near, in the near term, and this may change over time, but currently we're looking at um, the work that the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency is doing. Um, it would be great to have a, a hydrogeologist 
to be able to just review some of the more um, technical aspects of the, the groundwater sustainability plan that will come up when we're doing the modeling. Um, specifically, looking at the, um, the overall groundwater sustainability plan that comes out of that effort and to ensure that the district's um, groundwater and surface water resources are, um, are protected adequately. Um, looking to them to consult on, on any of the district's water supply sustainability issues that may be coming up with conjunctive use and looking at new well, well locations, potentially new water supply sources for the district um, and to prepare for board meetings and, um, and give any kind of uh, presentations to the board, client communication, hydro, hydrologic assessments, um, if we may be doing a water master plan, there might be some opportunity to have hydrogeologic services for that as well. <coughs> so just to have somebody who can be learning about our system, it's a very complex system, we operate in a very complex hydrologic environment here, and so somebody who can learn our, our needs here in this, in this valley and be able to represent us on all efforts with regard to water supply. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the board? Yeah. D does, uh, does it, do I understand correctly that we would furnish this person to the Santa Margarita Groundwater no. Agency? The Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency has already hired their own technical consultant to okay. to um, work with the model and to write the sustainability plan. Uh, this person would just be working on behalf of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District to ensure that what's coming out of that is representing the water district's needs. And they would be <clears throat> on an as-needed basis, though? On an as-needed basis. Mm -hmm. Like a so possible second opinion, if need be, if we had concerns that we didn't like findings or wanted to have a second opinion related to just the district. So basically, what we're, we're asking for um, is a, like a statement of qualifications and you know what the type of work that this firm's their you know basically a resume for the firm and the, uh, how much they would charge and then it was as needed so. If it came up like, oh, we need to do this certain work, that, that, that you know, an estimated cost for that work would come to the board for approval. Lost production. I wouldn't say that at every time not every single contact yeah, them yeah. for uh, as needed services, it wouldn't come to the board. We would have yeah. an overall sort yeah. of budget for them, report, the yeah. annual yeah. budget, right. and then that would be adopted by the board okay. in the pro hiring process. And then if we were to go over that amount, then okay. we would bring that to the board. What's the name of the company that we've, we've always been using? <clears throat> well, we were working with Nick Johnson. Nick Johnson. And he had worked with several different companies over okay. the years. Okay. Any notes? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I see the fee schedule here is in this um, sort of double secret process. Mm -hmm. um, I think we had a Nick. Um, exchange of emails on this where I don't believe the district is covered by that, not legally required to do that. And from my perspective, I think we talked about this once before, I just soon find out what the guy's price is right up front. I mean, price is always an issue. Um, but, no. but, but the district is not covered by the, we can choose to follow this procedure, but we're not required to do it. Uh, forget the law. You, oh, I think you might have sent me a reference or something. Yeah, I think but I looked, a law that says I looked it up, and it doesn't cover special districts like us. I'm going to have to refer to that. Okay. And, and so, to, uh, yeah. on that. And so, um, I, to me, I found, like, for example, when we did the, the selection of the attorney, right? Mm -hmm. We, we went through that process, and it, it was very um, it was a very unsatisfying process because you weren't able to look at the entire picture at the same at the same time. What's the value? What's the price? So um, 
I would like to see us start incorporating that into the RFPs and RFQs that we do. Okay. Well, we can definitely do that as long as it's good. Well, basically. It's already it's basically an hourly wage that we're looking for from them. Because um, that's what they're working on is an hour yeah, right. so and so that's a real and that, that may be easy their, lift. That may be their initial shot out the door, in which case you decide what you're going to negotiate, assuming that there's one or two people you're going to try to pick up. I get that. Mm -hmm. Your but statement of qualifications with their rate sheets. Right. It's qualifications. Oh. Uh, Request for qualifications. Uh, so, so if we're going to do that, then we shouldn't have seven fee schedule applied in the sealed envelope for separate email. All I'm saying, all I'm saying we'll is, make that change as long as it's legal. Yeah. Is that Nick? His company is called Exponent. That's who Nick was working with last. Yeah. Uh, so they might be. Yeah. The other thing is considered as well. It, it, sure, if they, if they submit a statement. But the other issue here is. Santa Margarita, we have to deal with Santa Margarita. And they have a hydrologist. And we need to know for our own benefit, for this district, what a hydrologist has to say about us and not rely on what Santa Margarita's Hydrologist is saying. Yeah, yeah, but I would try to put Santa Margarita on, on the hook to pay for. Well, on some of that, but we also have other needs for a hydrologist on our on our own evaluation of our own well fields that we do annually. We evaluate our own well uh, well fields from drought drought stress. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Some and yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sure there's a lot of uh, do just you regular mind? duties that this individual would would fulfill. Well, we can do a fee schedule. If we can run it over we'll by Gina. And, Take care of that. So, are we? So we're not going to approve this. Well, we'll make changes. I'd like okay. you to approve it just with those changes. Yeah. Well, yeah. First, okay. What we're asking is yeah. that um, the board authorize right. staff to solicit proposals yes. from qualified consultants to, yeah. to provide okay. as needed yeah. hydrologic services. Okay. okay. All right. It, you can always come with the motion prepared for us to read if you want. I do. That's fine too. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, perfectly fine. Do you have a motion and second? I made a motion to to um per second. second. What kind of motion is that? <laughs> a motion to her thing. She, she read it. I'm sorry, that's a little well, it's, vague. It's, it's a request for uh, um, a request for, for qualification. Qualification for okay. a hydrologist to, to cover the work that's not in the Santa Margarita Grove, as you need to the Santa Margarita Grove District. All right. Okay, that's the motion. And we have a second? So I've seconded it. Okay. Oh, anybody in the audience? <laughs> Sorry, got a little carried away there. And anybody, any of the ratepayers who want to talk about this hydrologist? Chuck? This is just an extremely important function to have in place for the district. It's a loss that Nick isn't available anymore. Um, you have to have something to cover both um, you know, the interest of the water district in terms of working with the groundwater agency. There's other stuff about the water supply that may not be directly related to the groundwater agency. It's, I'm glad you're all seem inclined to do this. Um, I, I hope we find somebody that can stay long term and learn this district well and be as valuable a uh, contributor as Nick was. Okay. Any other comments? No? Okay. Colin? Director Smallman? Aye. Director Falls? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Okay. 
uh, Redwood Mountain Fair sponsorship is the next item. And Nancy Macy, did you have something oh, you wanted to say? I've got a staff memo I can, I can hmm? read. I have a staff memo I can read. Oh, okay, you um, have a staff memo. The district uh, was contacted by the Redwood Mountain Fair asking for sponsorship, uh, providing uh, portable tank water for the two-day event. For many years, the district has sponsored water and a generator. This year, the fair has only requested a portable water tank. The 500-gallon five tank is stationed in the back of one of the district's small dump trucks for the weekend event. The water station is either um, self-served or staffed by Girl Scouts or some type of uh, civic organization. The cost uh, is included in the memo for supplying the water. It's approximately a little better than $2,000. Um, we get a return, a $2,000 level sponsorship, and it is a great way for the district um, uh, to be part of a, uh, it's a pretty much a local community event in San Lorenzo Valley. And it's a great way to uh, sponsor um, our, our repairs in the community. And staff's recommending that you approve. So what is included in the sponsorship? I'm, I'm not sure I followed the flow well, of money it, here. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it, we supply uh, a tank with water, and it's approximately uh, a, a $2,000 value. And they well, have what, what do we get? What, what's this $2,000 in well, exchange We'll have a, a, we a booth there and uh, a banner um, in our name. We don't get what do we do? Though, right? what we, we get, get the booth. Do we the, sell anything? No t shirts? No, no, no. The, do the we make any money? There. Our water is there. We sell the water? We do not sell the water. It's just a table. So, so I'm right. Okay. I thought for you know, when I was first read it, I thought that we were getting paid for this, but no, no it's, it's no. we are normally you pay to have, have a sponsorship. Or have it to, right. To be mm -hmm. set up. I see. To have a banner or a sponsorship or um, but we have a presence there. Well, so, uh, so people can throw eggs at us or water balloons? or we what? Be what, do we do I, I, what do we, we do there? What do we do? We provide potable drinking water and hopefully a non uh, uh, environmental sensitive cup. So we provide the, the, tap booth, water. the booth is where we would give away with the water? <laughs> That's correct. And I'm not sure they give it away or. And staffed by Girl uh, Scouts? Or Mr. Coffis can, mm -hmm. can I'd be fill happy in. Yeah. Your presentation. My name is Jim Coffis. I live in Ben Lomond. I've been a uh, co-owner of this water district for uh, 36 plus years. Uh, thank you all for your service. I know that there, uh, every one of us would probably prefer to get somewhere else at the moment, but uh, the fact that you're doing this shows that you've got some uh, commitment to the community, and I appreciate that. The Redwood Mountain Fair, uh, I've been involved as one of the steering committee members for uh, the last eight years. This will be our 10th uh, anniversary holding the event at uh, Loring Camp in Felton. Uh, it is a two-day music and art festival that typically uh, occurs the weekend after Memorial Day uh, and has uh, been a well uh, attended and very popular uh, community event, drawing mostly from the San Lorenzo Valley. We uh, sell about 5,000, or we have about 5,000 people come each day. Uh, we have uh, a steering committee of five of us that work throughout the year, and then we uh, bring together about six to 700 volunteers for the two-day event. We sell tickets at a very reasonable uh, price, I think $30 uh, uh, is uh, you know, uh, maybe even less than that if you buy really. Uh, and we uh, give away each year about $50,000 back into the community, uh, all of the proceeds, but it's, been, it's averaged about $50,000 each year to various school and local nonprofit organizations. The San Lorenzo Valley Water District has been a uh, uh, sponsor for all of those years. They have uh, the, we provide the water for free, and we in the district do, and it's one of the more popular uh, things at the fair. It has actually now been emulated by other fairs, uh, music fairs around the state. The idea that if you provide 
free water uh, it cuts down on the alcohol consumption. Number one, it also keeps people hydrated, and uh, it's a good way to show off the quality and value of our local water. Furthermore, uh, this year for the first time we're going to ban all plastic cups, so um, it's going to be bring your own uh, water bottle or you buy a water bottle on site and refill it. And um, uh, I just can't tell you how uh, what a good feel good uh, thing it is for the community to be able to. Um, have the uh, opportunity to do that. Secondly, I'd like to, Rick, you said that we had made the request for the water, which we do each year, but I, I'm surprised that we didn't also request the generator, which you've been gracious to provide us. Uh, maybe there's some reason that that was, couldn't happen, but I'd just like to point out on two, for your consideration, two things. One is, um, your participation as part of the community is really valued, and I think uh, the return on your investment is uh, incalculable, and you are talking about what do you get. You want a t-shirt, you can have a t-shirt. You want tickets, you can have tickets. If you want to sit at the booth and uh, pass out uh, flyers, you're more than welcome to do that as well. Uh, in general, uh, the free water has been a pretty good draw uh, so, I mean, you, you could take full advantage of that. If the generator is not available, or if you think that this is too big an expense for this district, uh, please consider uh, selling it to us, and we'll figure out a way to find somebody else to take that sponsorship. But we, we sure would appreciate the water district being a part of this event. We asked about the generator. Do you know at the PR? Pardon me? There are logos on all the PR. What, yeah, I mean, you, you can have pretty much. I mean, well, we asked about the generator and the district secretary questioned about the generator and we re the response back from who she contacted was they did not need the generator. We usually because have you, two. you've always we, got the we generator. Usually, yeah, we, we usually have a, have one and then a backup and, and yours is the backup. And we asked and they said no this year. Because we thought it was ought to. Well, there's only five of us. Did you say no? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm the site. I'm in charge of the site, and if I, if you guys don't do it, then I gotta go scramble and find it. So, uh, we. <coughs> so what? What's our policy about um, participation in these kinds of events? Yeah, what we do or don't do for each of them. It's a policy not just for this particular event, but in general. We, have, to my knowledge, we don't, do not have a written policy. Usually, a case-by-case uh, -case request would come to the board uh, and ask. We've done it before for track events at the high school. Not a lot. Um, we haven't done a lot because it does take some staff time in that. But we've always done it for the uh, for the fair. But we do not do it that often. There's been a couple other ones. Do we um, get requests or just uh, no one requests? Not that often. No, not that often. Um, like I said, we have a couple at, uh, at the schools have had a couple of requests um, in the past. But it doesn't go out that often. Maybe once or twice a year. Most of the time it's just the, the fair. Bill? Um, as everybody knows, there's an issue with recycling plastics now. So, I mean, we really don't do not want to have, hold a fair and sell people plastic bottles with water. So, I judge all these expenses actually that the water districts involved with. You know, there's been there's a lot of community involvement. One, this is one of them. This one's, and it's always very helpful to think this is going to cost everybody about a 25 cents each. Well, divide just to divide by seventy nine, two thousand by seventy nine hundred customers for the for what this is in. and as you said, Jim, this is the benefits are I, are priceless. The just the PR, um, not you know not like I said, not having a bunch of plastic bottles. We, we could have we could be selling plastic <coughs> bottles 
a water out there and we'd have a big pile of plastic bottles that we'd have to, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, all of these, you know, I know that we had that, but that's the way that, and, I, and what, I, what tells me is 95% of the, our water customers are going to agree to pitch in a quarter for this, so I know. I did have another question. Um, no cups at all? No paper cups? No plastic cups? We're going to have, have, we're gonna have uh, cups uh, in the first aid station for people that have zero other options and, and need hydration. So we will have, you will have to go to the first aid station to get a cup. If you don't have your own water bottle, if you don't. And how much are the water bottles going to cost? Well, you bring your own water bottle. Yeah, no, I get that, but if you uh, don't, I don't. Do you know what we're selling water so bottles? So they, they would have to I buy a beer don't think and then take that cup to get the water. Bottle, so I, uh, I can't answer that. I mean, the point was we, we're, we're really about reducing waste. And so it's it's a, I mean, we, we make a, a, an effort to inform people uh, that, that first, I mean, we've always advertised free water. And we'll and we'll make a bigger push this year because we're not we're not going to use plastic cups for beer either. I mean, we have no plastic cups. Uh, your point was well taken, Bill, about the plastic water bottles. We pretty much eliminated those. I'm in charge of, of uh, <coughs> waste disposal, and we've been able to uh, cut down a one six yard container simply because we don't have water plastic water bottles to pick up. How do they get their beer? If beer no has cups? to be in a, in, a, in a glass. You have to buy a glass. You buy a glass. <laughs> How much is the glass? I'm just curious. I think it comes with your first beer with a discount, and then you, you know, I don't, ten, I don't know what these prices bucks. are. This I know we're cheap. $10, <laughs> $10, $10 for your first alcoholic beverage. So it's like you get $2 the glass and the drink, glass. which is early eight. So it's okay. two bucks. And, and where do the glasses come from? I mean, do you guys buy the glasses and furniture? Buy, the, oh, yeah. buy myself. Yeah. Really? And are they are they uh, logoed? They're logoed. Yeah. Well, okay. Want to sponsor that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wonder. Uh, well, I'd be I'd be interested in in selling the glasses if if we can make a profit on it in our water booth if we have that. You know, we we I think our total operating budget for this fair is maybe one hundred fifty thousand, one hundred seventy thousand, maybe, and we. Uh, we generate, like I say, the last several years, we've generated $50,000, uh, and all of that, every nickel of it, is distributed to the uh, various groups that help us uh, marshal the volunteers that are necessary to put the fair on. So, I mean, uh, you kind of alluded to earlier of uh, money-making opportunities. I mean, I, I suspect that if you had a dump booth, you could probably... Well, I mean, the only thing you're describing <laughs> is a money-losing opportunity money. right now, so I'm, I'd rather turn that around. You know, I'd rather than lose $2,000. If you want to pay $2,000, we can provide the water, I'm sure. Well, and, and, or we can, and we can you work something and sell something and make something. That's what we'll have to do. If you guys don't sponsor it yourself, we'll have to find someone else to do it. Or, or take, you know, give out 48000 this year instead of fifty because... But, you know, it's going to, we have to supply water. We've, we've decided that that is a important function. And environmentally, we're, we're setting an example to, to the community that, we, you know, we're not, we're not going to sell, we're not going to rip off people and sell them a $2 bottle of plastic bottle that we're going to have to deal with the recycling. So. Yeah, if you don't see a value in this, then certainly I mean, I don't there's benefits think that you are, do it, but, you know, that's what, you need to wake up to those benefits for 25 cents. Again, it's 25 cents for every boy pair here. That's really good them. math you did for there, Bill. Uh, could I go to the... Bob's got a question. What? Okay. Uh, Rick, how does the staff, um, how does the staff situation work? Is this uh, overtime and... Or the, is a comp time that's off? Well, who, who it, it, it depends. They, they prep the tank during regular working hours. They have to clean it, they have to disinfect it, sample it. Uh, uh, and then on the weekend, uh, we set it up uh, during the work, the, the regular work day. And on the weekend, our on call staff will stop by. And we try to time it when he's out on the call, so when he's well, it's part of the two hour minimum because we pay a two hour minimum. So he'll swing by and stop. Or some of our staff would go to the fair. 
we'll swing by and, and keep an eye on it and, and look at the, uh, the equipment. It's, it's very uh, low tech. It's a, a beer box um, with a little 12 volt pump. Yeah, I think and, I saw that. The yeah, and, and that's, there's nothing to it. But we keep an eye on it to make sure the battery doesn't malfunction or somebody doesn't knock a wire loose or something. But and there's ice in the chest. That's, yeah. that's up to the fair. They, they have to bring their ice, and the people who stop the booth or whoever um, dish the water out, they take care of the ice. All we do is bring the water. And it's one trip. We fill it once and just kind of monitor it. And um, don't have to refill it again? We usually don't. No, we haven't yet. I mean, we, we got close, so we went to the, our next size up tank. So we, we don't like the truck take to move the truck once it's in there because of the amount of people. There's a large amount of uh, people from the San Lorenzo Valley that visit that fair. So once a, the rig's in there for safety, we leave it to the park. Um, yeah. And the staff, that, so we're not really taking people away from no. operating not, time later on. No. And we try to fit in, like I say, on a two-hour minimum, so it's very little, if any, costs to the district on overtime. Um, and like I said, a lot of our staff who live in the San Lorenzo Valley go to the, the fair and they'll swing by and, and check it out. And who staffs the booth? That I don't know. We handle this happening. We, the booth is, say, uh, is proximate to the first aid <coughs> booth, so they're yeah. next door to each other. Uh, and we've had in the past Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts that, that uh, stand in the booth because nobody else is. And, and Mount Community Theater did it one year. It didn't yeah, yeah, people, people, people it. Just, you know, just to make sure that there's ice in the thing and that people know how to pull the lever. All right. And that doesn't, they don't leave it on. Has the Scotts Valley provided water in the past at all? Or this, you is in, asked this is in the San Lorenzo Valley, so we've never asked Scotts Valley. We've always uh, well, it's a mountain fair, right? Mm -hmm. It's the Redwood Mountain Fair. That would include Scotts Valley, I assume. Is well, you know, Frank, uh, as a matter of fact, they have a festival on the same weekend, uh, so I don't know that it does, but we're welcome. We'd be happy to have them. We have uh, the Monterey Bay Air Quality Control District is a sponsor. They set up a booth and, and have an educational program there. Uh, we've had uh, Save Our Shores, uh, a number of other uh, age, you know, community organizations that are there for outreach. We have a hundred uh, art vendors, and we mix in the uh, the nonprofit and uh, and public agencies among them. Uh, there are there any uh, comments from the public? Uh, yes. Yes, Jim Mosier from Felton. I just would like to speak in support of what Jim's been saying, and for you to continue the sponsorship. This is just an amazing event, um, and it gives the water district this opportunity to send an important message to the community, first of all, that we have really great water and that we support um, the, the, the high quality water that's better than what you can buy in a bottle. Um, and puts, it, puts, it, it gives the, the, this incredible um, positive image for the district out in the community because so many people attend for a very small cost, as, as Director Smallman said. Uh, I, I um, have not actually worked at the booth, but I've worked next to the booth, and I've seen people come through, uh, and it is a kind of a magnet for people to come because you need water. It is so important that we have free water at the event. And I think it's just a big opportunity for the district to have this outreach to the community uh, in a very positive way. So I, I'm, I am very supportive of it and, and uh, speaking on behalf of uh, many of the people who go to the fair. Uh, they really appreciate it and they recognize that the Water District is an integral and important part of the community. Thank you. Uh, Debbie? Yeah, Deborah Lowen. Um, Jim and Nancy, I think the question that's been coming from the community is, and this is apparent in this presentation, is that this is a art and music festival with the intent to raise money for nonprofits. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So a lot of people have a to problem. Have fun. And to have fun, I guess. <laughs> but we're a lot of people in the district are having trouble saying, so is it the water district's mission to stop people from using plastic water. I don't believe it is in a mission statement. We probably have a lot of customers who use plastic all the time at home and, and buy bottled water. 
is it the district's mission to support nonprofits and, and give money away? And, and that's probably not it either. So I have a suggestion. My suggestion is Redwood Mountain Fair and Watershed Festival. That would solve a lot of the problem. Also, I was reading in the paper about the science fair. Very, very popular, sponsored by uh, private businesses. We have a lot of kids in these high schools who are doing these projects. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have the science fair presentation as part of, have the booth including the science, and particularly ones that have to do with water and an environment that would meet all the purposes of the district, it would meet the purposes of the sponsors, it would meet the purposes of Valley Women's Club, because that is your charter. I, and I should point out, Valley <coughs> Women's Club is not, uh, is, a, is a sponsor just like you guys have been a sponsor, just like uh, Wild Roots is a sponsor, uh, it's like. But we can change it from, what it is is it's promotion. The district is buying $2,000 worth of promotion, and it is not free water because it is water being provided by the district at a cost that you are able to give away for free. But the term free water, it, there is a cost to providing the water, and the district is picking it up. Right. I'm just saying to tie it in, including a watershed festival, including the science aspect of it since this, the education grants thing has been pushed back, that is a perfect way to still pay homage to that and to make it more appropriate for the district where people might feel a little more comfortable <coughs> sponsoring it. Because right now it's just basically promotion of the water district is what they're buying. Just an idea for next year. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, have I, the idea. I, I like the idea. I mean, I could, you're, you know, Get those kids involved, that'd be really fun. The whole point so. of it for me, as one of the five guys that works on this, is that this is a community event. That's why we keep the price so low, is so that anybody can come, and and they do. And it's, I mean, I'm surprised you guys haven't been. Okay. Yeah, you been? Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, then you should you <coughs> sort of get a sense times. of it's. You know, I mean, it's the only annual event in the valley that I know of that pretty much uh, you can find 50 or 60 percent of the locals in one spot. So I mean. And I hear you. I mean, it isn't we're asking you for two thousand dollars. We ask, you know, every sponsor for uh, similar amounts. Um, that's that, you know, that's what it costs in order to uh, you know put the operation on. And you want to be a part of it or not? Uh, any more comments from the public? Any? Anybody else? No? I have some more questions. Um, does the, I don't know this answer, but do we have a connection out there with the Roaring Camp? Not at or this they, time. Do they do their own? They have their own source. They have their own source. They have, uh, they don't have a very good source. They're in the process of annexing um, and obtaining water from the district. Right now, they're out of our service area in our sphere. They have an uh, inadequate water supply and, and an inadequate electric supply. That's where the generator comes in to be able to run the fans. Yeah, because you know the bulk rate for a unit of water is 1540, I think, is what I'm reading here, right? That's 748 gallons. Um, <coughs> I mean, a lot of people have water, that's for sure. Um, is, is the Roy Camp water supply not? Not sufficient. It's not potable. And it's not potable. Not potable. I think they do deal with all bottled water for their concessions. Hmm. In plastic bottles. Yeah. I, hmm. And they make money on it. We could too. They make money on it. <coughs> Anybody else? I'd like to make a motion that we approve the cost of uh, two thousand whatever dollars to supply water for the red to twenty nineteen red movement of air. I have a second. I'll second it. Okay. <coughs> All right. 
Director Smallman? Aye. Director Foles? No. Director Swan? No. President Henry? Uh, no. Motion fails. Um, the letter to uh, the Santa Cruz County Parks use of glyphosate. Right. In, uh, in recent years, the San Bernardino Valley Water District granted two easements over portions of uh, a couple of our parcels to the Santa Cruz County for the uh, use for the public, uh, the new public fountain library. The easements would allow the county to conduct repair and habitat restoration activities and the installation of nature trails and outdoor environmental education facilities on district property as part of the uh, library project. It's come to the attention that the county parks has or <coughs> is planning to use glyphosate on district property um, that is the subject of the easements. Uh, in response to the carcinogenic probability for glyphosate found in uh, the International Agency for Research on Cancer Report dated March 2015, the district has banned the use of glyphosate on its property. Uh, consistent uh, with this district-wide ban, on April 9th, the district sent a letter to the County of Santa Cruz Parks requesting that the county refrain from using glyphosate on district property and near the library site boundary where glyphosate, glyphosate may be transported onto the adjacent property. Uh, the letter is attached um, that we sent to the County Parks and we have not heard back from this point. From the and this is just in your packet for our information. The letter's been sent. And the letter has been sent. And staff is uh, planning to attend their, their meeting or whether they're going to discuss if they're still going to discuss. I'm not sure if they are or not. We haven't got anything back in writing. There's uh, nothing in the easement that is explicit about following district policies for their use of the easement. Is That's that correct? Um, would that be something that we could ask them if we can do an amendment? I guess we can always ask. <coughs> I'll refer to council. Um, and, you ask a question. You know, we haven't heard back from the county it's been kind of assumed that you know, they may write us back and say that yeah, they're going to do it anyway. Well, they're going to do it, they're not going to do it, or they have no intentions of doing it. Um, I, I would hope that they would honor our request. But, but, um, but, but they do have an exemption in their policy that they could apply for and, and use it under the county's policies. Have they, used, have they done it yet? They haven't used it. I heard both. From them. Their safety manager says that it's possible they used it already, and then from the other staff, they've said no, they haven't. So I'm trying to get a clarification. And it would have been the dabbing method that they used, that they, they did not spray. So yeah. I just want to make a legal clarification. I did say that the use of glyphosate would be outside of the scope of the existing easements, and um, I think that's a fair statement. And, um, Well, the reason I asked the question was to make it explicit, not an implicit or a we have to go argue with them or God forbid we have to go to court. Um, we're hopeful that they'll just sort of recognize this is an important thing to us and agree to amend the easement. Um, Right. to and make it explicit going forward. I, I make that comment just to clarify the record that uh, it's, it's, that there's a good, it's fair to say that the county should not be using glyphosate on district property over the district's ban, but I understand your point as well. Yeah, because when I read the grant of easement, it says, in consideration of the mutual environmental benefits herewith, district hereby grants the county and its successor designs, etc. 
a non-exclusive easement for the purpose of construction, maintenance, and operation of the environmental improvements. And so it kind of leaves that open as to what that means. Because they could say operation is, well, hey, this is what we do as part of our standard operating procedure. We file for an exemption, we get the right to do it, and we go do it. I don't know that it's clear that they can't do it or they shouldn't be doing it uh, based on that language. I, I don't know what this guy's thinking because, you know, once the public finds out that this Jeff Gaffney or whatever is cool with glyphosate, you know, it's not going to bode well for the county, you know, to tell you that. So if he wants to play games and, you know, thinks he needs to use glyphosate for this little small postage stamp <coughs> lot next to the creek, I mean, oh well. We'll see what happens. Okay. But we we can we can move ahead forward or just like amend the easement. I mean I would like to. I don't know if anybody else I mean, would like to. There's a good letter board. that you wrote though. <laughs> that, 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 yeah, that spot on. I, I might have something to add. Yeah. Uh, Rick Rick. Rick Moran from Ben Loman. Um excellent letter, Rick. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> and I have been in contact with uh, Santa Cruz County Parks and Rec Director Jeff Gaffney. And uh, he said to me that they have not used it yet <clears throat> and um, that they are applying for this exemption. All right. Uh, he also said to me that he would come up here and meet with me because we talked for a fairly long time, half an hour. Um, about this issue, and he realized the seriousness of many of the residents up here and the seriousness of, that this board has for the use of glyphosate in its watershed. So that's what I know, and uh, when I know anything else, because I plan on meeting with him, and um, I'll let you guys know, I'll let through Rick, and uh, I plan on being at that April 30th meeting. Rick Rogers it says he's going to come there. It's a public meeting. I'd suggest that anybody else who's interested uh, come as well. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes, uh, I'm Jim Mosier, and I'm here representing the Felton Library Friends. Your letter uh, CC'd us. Uh, we and I and we have a letter that we weren't able to get to you in time for the packet. I'd just like to read it. It'll take about two minutes, and then submit it. That's uh, to the Board of Directors. Dear Board Members, I am writing on behalf of Health and Library Friends regarding the recent disclosure that the Santa Cruz County Parks and Recreation Department is considering the use of the herbicide glyphosate at the Felton Library Discovery Park site. When this came to our attention, approximately at the same time as your Board, we promptly contacted the Parks Department to raise our concerns. We subsequently contacted Supervisor Bruce McPherson's office. It is our understanding, based on these conversations, that in light of the community concerns raised by your board, FLF, and others, that the Parks Department has decided to withdraw its application for glyphosate used at the library park site. Now, we won't know that for a fact until the, until the meeting, but that was what we understand is the intent at this point. It has not been used, is also our understanding, it's not been used at this point. We believe that the County Parks Department should strictly adhere to the spirit and requirements of the County's Integrated Pest Management Policy, which permits the use of herbicides only when there is documentation that alternatives to their use have been fully considered. Specific legal, public health, and safety concerns must also be reviewed. The policy also emphasizes the importance of public involvement in its implementation. In the case of the Library Park site, the primary problem is the infestation of invasive blackberry plants that are extremely difficult, time-consuming, and expensive to eradicate using non-toxic methods. Typically, by pulling the plants, a process that must be repeated over several years. There also is no guarantee that these methods will be successful. Nevertheless, despite the cost, we support using non-toxic methods first before any considered use of herbicides. We believe the San Lorenzo Valley community should be actively engaged in the decisions regarding the use of herbicides in our valley. To this end, we are considering establishing a program to monitor and report to SLB residents the progress made to eradicate the invasive blackberries and other invasive species on the site, including the SLB WD easement property, their success and costs. We will focus particularly on the criteria outlined in the county's pest management policy. This can be part of a broader program to provide resources to the community regarding habitat restoration 
and watershed protection strategies that minimize or eliminate the use of herbicides and pesticides. Such a program fits squarely into FLF's mission, vision of the new library park. Our mission is to support outstanding library and park services to the community with a special focus on environmental literacy. The library park facility is bisected by Bull Creek, an SLVWD water source. It is therefore particularly well suited as a location for educational programs that focus on habitat restoration, watershed protection, and the impact of global warming, and their connections to SLVWD's mission of providing safe, reliable water to residents and businesses. We are also dedicated to building community, establishing a safe place for residents of all ages to explore, learn, and constructively engage with each other regarding the important issues of our times. We would like to invite SLVWD to take part in such a program by including the district's efforts to protect the rare and sensitive sandhill habitats from invasive plants without the use of glyphosate. Expanding the program to the Sandhills will greatly enhance its value not only for SLV residents, but for both professionals and communities across the region and state facing similar habitat restoration issues. We are grateful that SLVWD is a partner in the Library Park project and look forward to continuing our collaboration with the district as the project moves forward toward the, and the Library Park facility open. Signed by Nancy Gert, President, uh, the Chair of Health and Library Friends. Thank you. Thank you. Any, uh, Debbie? Yes, I would like the board uh, to follow the recommendation to add the the ban on glyphosate being used on any easement property. I think that needs to be done as soon as possible. Um, I disagree. I think that any opening for using glyphosate of the Felton Library, I think we're averting a PR disaster by making it very clear it will not be there instead of equivocating. I, I beg your pardon. I, um, and I, I disagree with your character. Of course we disagree already. with it. Um, not paying attention to what people in this valley want has been disastrous for some people. No one is going to be elected to this board who supports glyphosate in, in the foreseeable future. This valley has come out very strongly against the use of glyphosate. I also have a suggestion there has never been a press release. This appears to be something that the county was not aware of county parks. So perhaps the information needs to be more clear and be put out there. If we a press release or a statement of condition that this is the district's policy uh, provided to the county, to the nearby cities, mm -hmm. provided to Parks and Rec, provided to any of our vendors or consultants, I think you need to be really firm. This is the policy that's taking place on this. It is non-negotiable. Your board made a decision. There are no exceptions in your policy. So to allow that there will be exceptions to it by someone else's decision, to, in my view, is just not acceptable. And I would like it written into the easement, but that's clear. Thank you. Anyone else? OK. So. Question oh, Barbara. I just I just wanted to say that um, I think this is uh, uh, I agree. I thought that was a very well written letter, Jim. Uh, I think that the, it sounds like the Felton Library is trying to make an effort to accommodate the the needs of the ban on the glyphosate, and at the same time, the district uh, needs to stand firm on their position on glyphosate for the property that they do own. And it sounds like the easement is the fence between the properties in some ways. But, um, you know, maybe, maybe it is the right thing to do is for the district to, to participate as a community to make these decisions for the habitat which we all own. So that so they're all together on the same page with what we do and what we don't do. So just my two cents. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else on the board want to say anything? No? Okay. I, I guess the only question I would have is, did we have a sense of the board to ask? No, I don't know. I was just going to ask for the direction on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any action the board wanted to take on this matter? Yeah. So, I mean, I personally would like to amend the easement, but I, I can't direct, you know, direct to do that by myself. So. You know, that seems well, to make uh, perfect sense, though. I well, maybe have a motion on the board. We don't need a motion to ask the county to 
Okay. We'll do that. I'll work with Gina on moving that ahead. Okay. Make it Correct. clear. All right. Okay. Uh, item D, uh, the draft fiscal year 2019-20 proposed budget revenues and expenses. So I gave each of you a fresh print out. Um, there was a small <coughs> modification versus what was in the original packet to um, the very last page. I didn't realize that some of the categories of the expenses didn't line up with my original spreadsheet. So I, the four lower ones were flip-flopped around. So the printout has those revised. We can't have flip-flop numbers. We can't have flip-flop numbers, no. Okay. So the Budget and Finance Committee met on April 9th, and essentially what this memo is is what was received there. Um, we also then went over <coughs> details, so um, descriptions for what rolls those up. So when you see the salaries and benefits category. That's multiple accounts and multiple departments making up that category number. And so what we did was we went through um, line by line each of those. Um, I'm sure we still have a lot of questions and discussions that we're going to be having at Budget and Finance. This board packet got put together essentially the next day. So that's why it's essentially the same version that was received in the Budget and Finance Committee. Um, so high level. Operating revenues were forecasting to be $10.8 million. Uh, the proposed operating expense budget is $8.3 million. So that would leave us at an operating income of about $2.5 million. So that's going to be factoring in the slated rate increase for when, when that happens. We're assuming similar um, water consumption of about 660,000 units of water per year, which is what the average has pretty much been staying stable at. Um, Non-operating revenue of 1.3, non-operating expenses of about 1.1, and so the overall net increase um, is forecast to be 2.7. The following pages break those down even more for, for what the breakdown is. Um, the following bullets start to go over the, helping to explain some of the operating expense fluctuations. So currently, from what the fiscal year 1819 budget request was versus what we think the fiscal year 1819 actuals are going to be coming in at is, I'd say, about significantly less. You know, it's a little over 300000 or so. Um, and so this starts to go over some of that. A lot is timing. So the fiscal year 1819 budget had um, the project manager, which became the engineering manager position, forecasted to be filled for the whole year. Darren just came on board. So there's a whole chunk of money that was budgeted for that wasn't spent in this current fiscal year 1819 that we would be realizing the full year effect of for next year. Uh, in addition, there was a water treatment position that was budgeted and hired in fiscal year 1819 at the January marker. So you're going to have another six months of a full year of that person being reflected in the 1920 budget. The only new hire in this 1920 request is an engineering associate, and that is slated to be a January 1st hire. The idea is to be able to get Darren a little bit of time here to assess what it is that he's exactly picturing needing, um, and then hiring that person January 1st of 2020. And it kind of goes over some of the other different stuff. Um, health rates. Surprisingly, um, were lower than anticipated. Uh, the health changes that came about actually made it more beneficial for the employees to change their plans, um, and which in turn saved the district about sixty thousand versus what we were forecasting for the eighteen nineteen budget. And then, kind of some of the other basic ones: non-operating revenue. The property tax increase um, 
it is in line with you know around a four percent increase that we're anticipating coming from the county in next year's property tax revenue. <coughs> Other than that, a lot of it's you know staying steady. So we can kind of go over. I did bring some of the additional support, so if people have some questions, I'm not sure if anyone was able to go and look at all of the detailed report. It is a lot of line items and a lot of columns. Yeah. Um, so sometimes it can be a, a lot to take in. So if there's any specific questions or different category questions, I can try and tackle some of those. Um, well, this is um, basically, we're not really taking any action tonight on this order. This is just a draft with the budget? This is just a draft, so it will continue to go back to the budget and finance, but there are certain areas that I would like the board to give staff direction on. Um, there was, yeah. Staff had prepared our first, um, our initial proposal. The district manager did go through and make some cuts. Um, one of the main ones that I do want to talk about is the environmental expenses. Since the board recently stopped the data collection and data grant, um, we, correct, sorry, water education grants. Or yes. All of the different right. things, different things. Oh, so the, um, the request came in to do them for 1920, but the district manager wanted to remove some of the more discretionary environmental expenditures so that the board can be the ones helping make the, de the decision for the direction that they want for the 19 so budget. That, that got cut, and that was, was that 32,000, 38,000? No. Um, for what was being requested, for, for, what's, for what was anticipated for fiscal year 1920, it was the watershed uh, data collection grants of $7,500 and the education um, program grants of $17,500, so a total of $25,000 for that. But that was, we, we resolved and we voted for that and to, 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 to suspend that. Correct. And uh, so that's, that's taken out of the budget. So the, it's, that's my going big thing going. was I recently got an email about the, um, the steelhead monitoring program for the thing, and then there's so this was, I can't remember his name, but he was concerned that that was cut out of the budget. Is that correct? So the Olympia Land Management for Invasive Species of $10,000 was removed, and then the Juvenile Salmon and Stream Habitat Sampling Stewardship, which is the joint project with the City of Santa Cruz, um, typically with Don Alley, of $25,000 was removed and some of these removals were just to make it so that it's a conversation so that the board can get staff direction for well i, I don't understand why why you know we just went through this process about arguing about two thousand dollars for the weather and not fair and why we i mean that that item as far as i'm concerned should also be um, separated and voted on and not you know you know what i mean i, I don't think i don't believe that we should be messing with the budget and not not addressing these costs and not um, and not arguing and not discussing them. Well, that's why we're having this meeting. Well, I mean, this well, is yeah, to discuss I mean, I, the fiscal I mean, year 1920 budget. If you if you're telling me that you're <coughs> cut this new budget, cut out that, and I, God knows what else, then how can I possibly vote for it? You don't we're, have to. We're not going to vote for this budget. Well, Not tonight. Uh, no. no we so just we're, just, we're just basically going to make comments. Hold yes. discussions about, about talk about putting items in the budget, taking budgets okay. out, uh, items out of the budget. Well, I, then I would like to say that items like that and other ones, like the education grants, okay, peace, we voted for that. We agreed to discontinue that. So I agree that we, you know, we can take that off the budget. But if there's any other ones, I think all of them need to be discussed thoroughly before um, they get, you know, they're not in the put well, They're all here. And, and, and it shows what was removed. Okay, so we go. So, uh, so similarly, anyway, how much, is, how much is the fish monitoring program? How much is it? $25,000. $25,000. Okay, with that. Okay, what other ones are you talking about? The Olympia Land Management for Invasive Species of $10,000. Okay, and then now that money was going to be set aside to do what? So you're saying was going to be. This is for the future budget. For so the this future. Is, yeah, so this is for the to 1920 budget. Room or to I'm assuming that's this project. To, to, to get rid of the, on the, the, those two, the, what, 48 properties up in the well, to, to get rid of the invasive species. We had budgeted ten thousand dollars, 
and now you want to cut that. I know. I just I want I just want this stuff, you know, because I don't want it, you know, we're here to discuss this budget and I want def clear definitions on what exactly you want to cut and what you know and then sure everybody else does. Well too. it's kind of a collaborative effort, so I mean that's where any of what was deemed more discretionary environmental spending, okay. we simply just zeroed out. Okay. So that the board can help give us direction for what programs they do think or they don't think they want to fund or how much if they want to see it. Well, yeah, it won't in the anyway, back with the, in the invasive species back with that. So you, that's, that, that's telling me that we're not going to do nothing to get rid of the invasive species. We're not going to invest any money into that. You want to just. That's where it stands now. Well, yeah. Yes. I, yeah. So. so it's it's those. It's also then the water conservation program that has the resident like the different residential water rebates that we have currently. Oh, right. A commercial program devices um, and some of the different outreach. You know, there's like a five thousand dollar annual fee for the uh, water coalition. Okay, so then that one. I mean, I'm sorry to be a pest here, but um, so how much money was that budgeted for originally? Twenty-five thousand. Okay, twenty-five thousand, and that was to provide like rebates for like low flow, shower head, you know, water conservation. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. Okay. Washing machines. Yeah. So this is obviously a sensitive subject for the board. The board has given no, I know, I just direction I just, for staff, and so staff didn't want to put something in. Yeah. and be told you're not going with the direction that you know that this board, board just voted yeah. for. So uh, I, yeah, that's where just, we just wanted to open the communication so we could figure out, is it a no, yeah. is it a no spin, is it a some spin, is it a full I, spin type to of To be it. honest, I, would, I think it would be a really good idea to just itemize these costs and say, okay, $25,000, well, each, and it did a description so we can discuss them as a board to say, okay, well, are we going to continue to spend this money? Or not, you know. Instead of just going, oh, okay, you know, that budget's okay. Because I'm, I'm in, a, I'm in a loss, you know. I mean, okay, so we went through the three items: the fish monitoring, twenty-five thousand, um, the invasive species, ten thousand dollars, and that was just for the well field, and then the water <coughs> conservation, twenty-five thousand dollars, and you know, there might be four, three or four. But I think that we should just. I think full, we need, full request is approximately $90,000. $90,000 total of cuts. Right. Of this budget. Not necessarily cut, but okay. zeroing out so that we have a discussion okay. at a full board so that it doesn't just skip through. So which ones am I missing then? Um, so I got I mentioned those three. We, I mean, we, we can go ahead and get, I mean, this is the first... This is just the first, yeah, we're not going to... Exactly. Gonna, so gonna, what we can do yeah. is put together some, does that sound like an idea, is to put together some of the different well, things? Well, I'd like to hear the, the full board's comments on the draft budget, on, on where they want to see the district want to move ahead. Um, uh, and what areas do you want to, do you want to put these these items back in or, or give, give staff some direction? I'm not hearing very much. Yeah, I, I well, I... Some of them, I think, are like well. Obviously, I'm, I the fish monitoring program is. I can go on and on. Uh, that that's is money well spent. I mean, uh, just for water quality alone, to do that is, you know, I, I think there's going to be a big problem. With that so that's one of the ones that I absolutely support, and you know, I support that because mm -hmm. from before the. Um, We've got to, we should figure out a way to get rid of the French broom up with the thing. So $10,000, I think, is a reasonable amount. You know, I think that should stay. Um, the providing money for um, the, the water conservation stuff, $25,000. I don't have a problem with that one either. Um, and I'm not sure, we haven't discussed what, what we're, so 25000 25, so we're 50, 60,000, where's the other $30,000? The watershed data collection grants and education programs, 25. And membership. Okay, with but the we water already voted that off, right? The watershed. 
That was for last year's budget, not that, for. Oh, uh, okay. Correct. So that's <laughs> the next so that's still on the. That's what I'm saying. Some stuff, yeah. you know, it's been clear, so we knew to back off on those, but that's what okay. we just wanted to so have. So the rest of that 30000 is for the. Um, and then 5000 for so the we, Water Coalition. We suspended. Um, okay. Okay. So just out of we, we, I, I haven't said much, but I'm going to say something now. We have a lot of things we have to do. There's been deferred maintenance for five years. There's not sufficient um, uh, money to do uh, the, the fix the infrastructure. Uh, we don't have enough money set aside for emergencies or even to, for, uh, let's say something happened and, and we need money to just run the district. We don't, we don't have it. And so where, why do we keep saying, this isn't very much money, so let's spend that. This isn't very much money, so let's spend that. We're talking millions of dollars that we need to fix things and you can say oh well that's not enough but you got to start somewhere is is my feeling we need our reserves need to be much better than they are um, we just have a lot of things this is a water district we need to provide water to people in the community. And for one thing, for the fish monitoring, that has never gone out for an RFP, and it should, to see if we could get better deals. Um, and do we have to do it every year? Can we do it every other year? Can we do it every three years? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Um, but we've got to look at costs. And we have to start somewhere. <clears throat> and, anybody? Bob? So I, I sort of took it up a level and to look at the budget in a holistic fashion. And using last year's audit, ran some numbers and these may not be accurate because I don't have the hand transcribe them. I don't have the underlying spreadsheets, but just some numbers for people to keep in mind. If you look at the 10 years that I think you put in the audit, which was really good, um, if you have an average of four units, your bill has gone up 171%. Uh, the number of connections has gone up you know, about 1%. I'm guessing because I don't have the exact numbers, but I think it's pre-Long Pico and post-Long Pico, basically, are the numbers, 500 connections, more or less. Uh, the amount of water we've produced has gone down by 2%. The water sold has gone down by 16%. Um, the revenue has gone up by 143%, and the expenses have gone up by, it looks like, uh, 61%. Inflation during that time was about... Uh, 19%, more or less. So these are the macro numbers that we're having to deal with, that our community is having to deal with. And this number, which basically looks to me like a 10% uplift from the actuals this year, um, doesn't accomplish what, I'm, what I'd like to see around cost reduction. We focused on one particular area, but this budget is growing like uh, crazy from an expense point of view. Um, I understand that there's deferred maintenance, for example, but I look at deferred maintenance as an unfunded liability, just like I look at the uh, unfunded liability for our employees that are expecting a retirement. And I think, the un I think the deferred maintenance and other things like that need to be treated differently. They need to be looked at out of the net that we have not built into the operating expenses themselves. Um, I also had a hard time matching this up with the audit because it looks like the non-operating expenses in the audit are handled differently than they're handled here, which 
made it a little bit hard for me to follow. So I'm really trying to separate recurring from one time. So meter sales, for example, are not revenue that we should be putting into our operating budget. They are one-time things that need to go to things like deferred maintenance, um, pensions, reserves, uh, that sort of thing. And if there's a way to sell more meters um, on upgrades or what have you, that'd be great um, because we need the money. Um, but I look at this budget going up as, as far as it did. I think we talked about this during the budget committee meeting. This is a place to start, but you might be getting other guidance. Um, I'd like to see the budget go down from last year in terms of what we're looking at at an operating cost point of view. Because we, and it's not for me to say cut here, cut here, cut here, cut here, unless you want me to. Um, but I think the board should say, either we want it 10% up, or we want it flat, or we want it down 5% as a matter of policy, and then the staff goes off and builds what the budget would look like under those conditions. I thought that pretty much it said it's a 4% increase, but you're saying it's a 10% increase? Well, I'm having a hard time following it the way it's formatted, but when I look at variance to FY1819 estimated actuals, I'm assuming that means estimated actuals to proposed FY1920 budget. Correct. Is it 9% increase? And that's 9%. And versus the fiscal year 1819 budget is a 4%. But like I said, is you have a full year of an engineer, you have a whole, I mean, there are, that's why I was going over some of the reasons as to why you're seeing no. I get that. that. More drastic. What I'm trying to do here is do apples to apples and then you fold in the, the other part. So there's no question our district needs to move from a pure operating or a mainly operating focus to an engineer and construction focus um, because that's what we need to do in order to fix our infrastructure. So that's going to be a huge thing for us. But it's not unlimited money. And our ratepayers. Um, are looking at these, I mean, they may not have gone through and done the spreadsheet, but they intuitively know inflation's not going up nearly as fast as the expenses or the amount of money that they're having to pay for this, and it's not clear exactly what the ROI was for each of these years for the dramatic increases that, that they received. I don't know that I can explain it at this point either. I mean, and this so, isn't a typical ROI company. I mean, I when, you have, when you're going and having to go out and having spikes in operating expenses because you had a horrible winter and you had massive amounts of you know, pipe breaks and different stuff like that, that's where you're not going to find ROIs on every single thing. I, I get that, and that stuff needs to be broken out separately. Right now, I think we're doing too much of sort of folding in um, sort of normal operating and those sort of one-time things that occur um, because I look at them very differently. Yes, we live in an area that has uh, weather events and we have to deal with that. But I can't tell that from here. And when I look at the operation expenses and the treatment expenses, at least according to the, um, uh, according to the, the audit, um, like distribution went from 2.6 to 2.8 last year. Yeah, that's 200,000. That, I mean, it did go up to like 2.8, 2.9, but it, it wasn't one of these things where, oh, that's a spike due to the 17 rains. I, I can't see that. Same thing with the treatment. The treatment is, um, well, actually, I think the treatment is being a little treated a little differently here because the numbers really spiked big time in the last couple, three years. Are you looking at the, the statistical section of the audit? Yes. So I wouldn't use that. Well, then what? <laughs> I'd, use the, I'd, I'd use this document that's right in front of you. I mean, I, that's but, where you're getting but, the same buckets but, for what your budget is. But this is where we need to get all the buckets aligned. If we're going to be, and that that statistical information actually means something. Because that's what people are going to look at from a trend analysis point of view. There's a difference between how you book journal entries for the audit versus what you don't put non-cash expenditures typically in. I mean, this budget is to 
be gauging you to what you're going to be able to afford real cash wise. Right? So that's what I'm saying. That's the big difference between the audit and the budget. All, all I'm saying is that when I look at this, there's we, if we're going to go sell this to the community, that we're that they can be looking at anywhere from six to nine percent in operating expense increases every year from here out forever. That's a that's a big lift given where we are with inflation, given where we are with the rates and all that. And so at this point in time, I I, I can't I can't see how to pass this budget the way that it's proposed here. Well, I mean this is we're in, we're in the very beginning stages, and I mean, you were at the Budget and Finance Committee meeting where we did go line by line and did explain the increases for here's, you know, we want to do $25,000 to do a back truck conversion because that's going to save us money down, you know, down the road. So, I mean, we have sat here on the Budget and Finance the very first round and gone through line by line and identified <coughs> what these fluctuations are. Let's be clear, the Budget and Finance Committee, we got the information during the meeting and we went through it to understand what the line items were. Not, we didn't spend a lot of time because it was not clear to me anyway what the line items were. So we didn't spend a lot of time discussing the underlying, what are we going to do with this number on that. There were a few high points like the vacuum, 25,000, I get that, but what we're talking here about is a difference in numbers that are quite big. It's not just the back truck. Right, and, we're going to be talking and, we're going to have more budget and finance committees about this. This is going to come back to the board probably yeah, two more least, times. I mean, least. this is where we have to start the discussions somewhere. And I don't think that it's to, I mean, given the budget and finance committee was on the 9th, quite literally, my only option was to turn around and present essentially the same, but, the same thing. But what I'd like to see, you know, but is we've got to get that expense curve down. They're asking for general direction from the board. So as you mentioned, what about, I mean. Just wait until Steve has if, a chance if, to if talk. If you to wanted him. to, you know, give direction, say, yeah, let's let's see the operating expenses hold flat or decrease by some percentage. Yeah. And let them figure it out. I mean, it's, the other ones are the experts yeah. on it, right? Yeah. So that would be my kind of direction. My other one would be, if you've plotted it in these numbers, the rate increase, at the end of the year, I'd like to see what they would be if the rate increase didn't occur. <laughs> Being worse. Well, uh, no, of course it'd be worse, but you know, how much worse? I, I'd just like to, you know, yeah. get an idea. The rate increase, it's roughly about half a million dollars. Is, is about is about what that works out to be. The only thing that I really want the board to be mindful is when you're looking at a lot of this stuff is looking at the district, the different buckets, and there's a lot of these expenses that are fixed. They're not stuff that you can simply turn around and cut. So from what you know, you mentioned a 10% decrease that you wanted to see off of last year's numbers, quite literally, you're talking about laying off employees um, to be able to see those type of results. We're not a typical private corporation to where you have a marketing department or you have a R&D department that you can sit here and squeeze. Um, type of a thing. A lot of these are very more so fixed, um, unless you want to consider staffing, staff not to be a fixed cost um, type of a thing. That's where we can go through and pull out some of the different stuff that is more discretionary, you know, obviously training, you know, conferences, some of the different memberships, those will be a little bit more discretionary or those areas that I think should be good. I mean, within reason, you know, but, you know, probably not. Um, but, like, a lot of the operating expenses are, they're going to be what they're going to be. We're very mindful of being competitive with um, inventory, that we're going out and trying to get the multiple bids, and they even request the documents back, you know, because it's public record then. They can get their little bid sheets back and see who sees them on what. And certain ones, by golly, they're not going to get beat twice, at least on that, that part number. So, I mean, we are very mindful with, with some of those different things. Um, some of the different things that do still also go into the budget are any, um, for, for labor, it does assume like a 3% cost of living increase. So, I mean, those type of things will be built into this. Um, 
health insurance increases, you know, we, we assume those different things to be in this. So this is what I would consider to be a more fully loaded picture of what. But the current MOU calls for 3%, as I've read, is that correct? That's what, it, yes, that yes. is what it's typically they, has been. So well, that's well, the expiration on it, unless, well, it continues going forward unless somebody decides to within 120 days and 90 days. Make Different that, things, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But right now it's built in at 3% a year. Yeah, so we staff. keep those things going. So I mean, it, so it should be a pretty good representation. And like I said, it's, it's very easy for me to go back and s explain why fiscal year 1819 is coming in lower than what the prior year budget was because you know the majority of that is, is a labor related function. Um, so a lot of this stuff is very answerable. It's stuff that, I mean, if there's a certain area that we want to poke and prod, we really can. Um, and so that's where I at least wanted to get it here. You know, we're in April to get a feel for the whole board and see if we can get some sort of, not unanimous, but at least get some of the different main ideas that are bouncing around so that we can continue to develop it to do the drill down so that at the next budget and finance and the next time we do bring it to the board, we're getting that whole the whole picture that people are looking for. Bill? Uh, again, I mean, this water district isn't on Pico. I mean, it, it, you know, we've had to survive on 500 customers. This, this is 7,900 customers, so, you know, it's a very important to consider how much money are we talking about for these considerations. $90,000 is $11.39 a year per person. So, I mean, I think if we make these cuts, I think we can send you a check for $11.39 and you, what you'll lose is you'll lose the fish monitoring, you'll lose, we won't get rid of the invasive species up in the sand hills and the education grants and all the things that we talked about for $11.40. Okay? Um, $11.40 is not going to help me keep your rates down. So I've been, you know, I've been preaching and preaching over and over about some savvy business plans about doing our in-house engineering and construction projects, saving millions of dollars, not $90,000, millions of dollars. And it somehow, it's, you know, people don't perk up their ears with that, and, uh, but we're all focused on, oh wow, we're gonna save $90,000. We're gonna save $2,000. We're gonna save, we're gonna cut the stipends. That's, six, that's a dollar per person a year. I've worked for, you know, I've worked for the companies, private companies, Scrooges. I've been to Bob, Bob Cratchit a couple of times. And those companies, they don't see the benefits. They don't see the benefits of these small expenditures and they don't grow. They don't work as a team. They just, the, the, the top brass, they, 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 they're able to, they penny pinch and they're the ones that they get rich. They had a couple bosses that were Scrooges. And they're the only ones that they didn't talk about the company. Uh, could them. you get back to our budget instead of somebody else's? Well, I, it's a completely different situation because we're a public agency. So, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying that we are a public agency and we have some obligations. And, you know, to spell it out, to consider. I mean, yeah, I want to hear from the public. Are, you know, are you willing to pay $11.40 for those items? Are you willing to pay, the education grants was $4 out of that, $4 per year. Uh, raising the stipends is a dollar per year per person. And it, I'm just saying that this amount of money is meaningless for this water district. It's not going to help, it's not going to, I'm not going to be able to tell you I'm going to keep your rates down. I'm going to send you, I'm going to be able to send you a check for $12. So okay? you, you want to get rid of staff, is that it? No, I'm just saying that your cuts that you and want to make is $12 a year. Oh, come on. Per person. Come on. You know what? Um, our biggest expense is staff. And we can't I'm not cut. about staff. Just be quiet. Uh, we can't. We can't reduce staff. We need the staff we have. The state has been on top of SLV for years for years about not having adequate field staff. Now they, I'm assuming we finally have adequate field staff. So who are you going to get rid of? Because that is our big expense, is 
is staff. And I'm not for getting rid of any of them. I'll tell you that much right now. I'm not talking about getting rid of any of them. I'm not, I, do you mind? I'm talking to Bob, okay? Well, we're talking to the whole board um, and, to the, and to the community through both people here as well as on, on tape. Um, you know, I think the other thing that um, we should look at is what kind of changes do we want to make and how we do business. Um, I think I mentioned, for example, when we talked about the, the, um, the French broom situation, is it in the best interests of the district to own that property? We, you know, our primary mission is not habitat preservation. Our primary mission is different. And there are other groups out there that have as their primary mission doing other things. We can certainly see if there's a way to be able to partner with them. Um, there might be a different way for us to do business relative to the services that we provide, either at charge or no charge. I don't know these things. It's not, I'm not operating the, the, the district. But I do think that in, in light of these numbers, which are accelerating rapidly and which appear to have no end in sight and, in fact, are, look like they're going to be accelerating relative to inflation, I think we owe it to our ratepayers and our customers and our neighbors to say, we did a deeper dive in this. And this is what it means if we have either a flat or a minus 5% budget or something like that. Um, at the end of the day, uh, operating the district does not put more pipe in the ground either. And either we're going to get that money to stand up a pipe crew or put pipe in the ground or build tanks or what have you from the operating income, or we're going to get it from a bond, or we're going to get it from a loan. And we may already be tapped out on what we can get from a debt ratio point of view. I don't know. Um, but, but everything that increases that number to where we can do more from an infrastructure point of view is, is goodness to me. Well, so we could ask Stephanie to do a flat budget and see what it gives us. Or, and, or and, a down budget. You know what? I think you're pushing it to get flat. But okay, a flat budget, a down 5%, and how do we accomplish that? And what goes away? And Can then, you do that? Something along those lines. But I mean, yeah. at, at a certain point, all it is is... It's just messing with the numbers. Well, or, correct. I mean, look at what gas prices have done in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. We don't have control over that. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that are going to be in. I mean, our, our fuel and vehicle, car, it's, that's a significant chunk of this budget. So, that's where some of these things, I can list out <coughs> items that I think have flex. And I can list out the ones that, realistically, it's going to have to go by run rate to a certain extent. Because, the, you know, what it costs us in fuel each year is roughly the same give or take whatever the, the fuel prices have, fluctuations have. Done. Electricity costs, fuel costs, materials costs. I mean, we don't really have any control over that. You know, it makes sense, obviously, to focus on the expenses, right? Reducing the expenses, but I don't know why we don't put some thought into increasing the revenue. Through means other than increasing the ratepayers' burden. There could be any number of opportunities that creative people can come up with that could allow us to become a revenue generator in other areas. And I, I think we should even put together a committee that does nothing but focus on something like that, that says, here's some opportunities and options. We talked to 7,900 people a month, they're roughly that, right? Someone There's something we can be, be we, could, we could be leveraging the exposure that we have to get something in return, right? Someone in the admin committee, um in the public brought up a good idea as to how can we do a PR complaint, uh, campaign to show people how good our water is here, how it's better than the bottled water that, that you're buying to mm -hmm. try and get people to encourage to, you know, stop wasting plastic and fill up at their home, you know, versus versus going out and buying, you know, Sure. Of water. I mean, there's, I mean, that's the kind of thinking, at least, that gets you started in areas where you can look at maximizing uh, revenue opportunities. And I, I just think we should focus on that, at maybe not as much, but 
uh, to some extent more than we have been, which is nothing. Well, especially uh, with the numbers, uh, the historical numbers here. I think the strategic plan as the board moves forward with that is going to also be a strong guiding point because there's different things, you know, you know, for example, we chose not to do the, the Redwood Mountain Fair. Um, we do things like we do offer a rebate program and different stuff like that. Um, so that's where, you know, the, the general philosophy I'd be interested in seeing because to me, those are relatively, like the rebate program, a relatively low hanging fruit to where it um, is perceived very well from the community, the fact that we do offer some of those, while you don't have a ton of people partaking in them, so it's not a huge cost, you know, what would it be if that wasn't there anymore? Um, you know, so that, that that's going to be a philosophy in my mind of the board for, for what type so of we can work a deal with Home Depot. Home. We'll sell you your refrigerator. We'll sell no, you your washer dryer. I don't know what we should be I, I don't think a refrigerator can. I feel like that. <laughs> You know, again, you know, the, the small amount of money, $90,000, everybody says, oh, it's a lots, lots of money, but the benefits pay for itself, in my opinion, okay? I think we should we, we should argue about all those items and, and discuss whether we're going to pay for them or not. I, I don't have any problem with that. But, again, the real meat and potatoes are really going to involve doing our own engineering and, we, we, again, we saw... At last bid, we got accepted a bid that was marked up. I'm a contractor. I'm, I work for a contractor. It's crazy now. We're marking up contractors. So this board, we're going to sit there and we're going to try to approve these contracts. It includes engineering that, you know, that we can do in-house that Darren probably does a good job on. And, uh, <laughs> um, and um, and we can, we can. I, I just know that there's. That's. This is the meat and potatoes of saving money. And I just, you know, I just want to make the final point. You know, hey, take the take your ball off the focus off the these pennies. You know, we, it, you know, because there's a markup. There's the material. The contractors buy the material. They mark up the material. They pay. And then if you do design bill, you don't have to put it off for bid. So there's all that time of money and putting stuff out for bid, da da da, like, and that. And there, I, I, I see this large amount of money. I, you know, I know we can't do jobs, all the jobs, but I know that there's a long list that we can do. Um, and that, I mean, just right away, that ERV valve, I just use that one for example, it's only a two week job. I believe that we could have done that for about $300,000, including <laughs> all your costs and everything. For about 300, we got a bid. The lowest bid was 468. Next one was 698. Next one was 898. We're going to get more projects like this. We're doing all these projects like this. We're going to see more projects where each of these projects we're going to be spending. We're going to have to approve them because we've got to get them done. If you don't get them done, then it costs money to let them sit there. I watch a redwood tank fall apart. You can't let it fall apart because you're going to lose a bunch of money that way. So we've got to get them done, right? So it's a lot of money that's right there. Let's just, what, what are we wasting our time with this? Talking about $2,000, $90,000. Uh, are you I, done, please? Yeah, I'm done. Um, Luke? Go I'd ahead. Like suggest Luke. Time, Luke? I would like to suggest this time to open it up to the public. Yes. Please. Okay. Uh, and you Can want I to be the question? first to speak? Please. Um, Stephanie, you say that the capital budget will come soon. Do you have a date when we're going to have a rollout and be able to see that as well? I'll have it at the May, I think our next meeting is May 7th. Let me just suggest that time is, is essence here because that's a significant part of the budget that we're not talking about yet. And we've only got about two months to get the budget approved, correct? Right. Okay. I, and, well, okay, so we will, at May 7th, so we'll get May a first look at we'll the, have, we'll the, the capital part. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, the capital will get tied in. Um, that and then the only thing that I would like to add is I do see an end in sight. Um, the district has been working off of a, a staffing study since 2016. Um, that's where a lot of these different positions were, were discussed and have been growing. Um, so compared to the prior budget, a 4% increase, um, that's including an extra half, a, half of a head count. Um, it'll put the district up to 36 employees total. And I don't believe that we have any others slated. So 
it has been a ramp up since about the 2015 2016 year but there were plans and reasons behind that um, and so i do see the larger increases coming to an end i mean labor is a, a major cost so i mean the fact that a lot of that staffing um, has been fulfilled is going to start to curtail future years outside of working on the budget um, we are working on trying to get a five-year a five-year game plan to kind of help show some more of that stuff and so you know, that'll be something that hopefully we'll have um, ready in line as part of the budget review that we can also look at. Is there anybody else in the public? Actually, oh, you were you were <laughs> done with? Ask one more question. <laughs> I, I assume that you didn't have the capital because you wanted to give Darren a chance to get up to speed before you, you attack the capital or? It, well, it kind of it goes in phases. Typically we get the department heads all have their operating expenses that they're pulling together, you know, and then typically the capital component folds into it as well. Here's my question. Is there anything you need on the capital aspect from the engineering committee? Right now, no. I, don't okay. I don't believe I just, so. Part of it was I was getting uh, Kirsten and Darren got together some of the timelines, and so part of it's been planning out the timelines for some of these projects and stuff. Um, so it's kind of all been coming together really these last couple of weeks. Yes, sir, back there. <laughs> uh, James Kendall, Ben Loman. My family has been at the wrong end of public services, cutting themselves down over the decades numerous times. My dad used to work for the UC system as a professor, my mom was a librarian and then had other public service jobs. And multiple times just seeing city, college, governments focusing on the small, easy to understand pieces of money that they can cut, slicing away a whole bunch of what they consider fat but still adds up to less, $90,000, still less than 1% of the total budget, but wiping out large portions of foundational stuff which keeps monitoring the rivers, monitoring the health, clearing out invasive species and everything are so incredibly cheap but give such continuing returns. Getting rid of that and then having to rebuild later once money is there is going to be so much more when you can save so much more money by just looking at single large big projects and cutting those down by 10% would save more money in one go than cutting every single small little piecemeal thing which is very easy to look at, understand, and cut, but it's going to do so much more damage long term. And my family has been affected by this numerous times, and we've made out very well due to the circumstances, but all the various organizations and groups they used to be parts of have suffered very poorly in the aftermath of the cuts that made, that let my parents go. And I just, I feel like doing this here is, going, is not the best way forward. Thank you. Anybody else? It's Jim. It's Jim Moser from Felton. Um, I guess I guess I'm very concerned um, about the notion that the water district does not um, cons the notion that the water district's mission doesn't include preserving and protecting the watershed. Uh, in order to provide safe, reliable water, it's incredibly important that we have a, a, a habitat and a watershed that's protected and for the water the water the fact that the water district owns much of the some of the property in order to do that I think is just an absolutely fundamental part of the mission of the water district during the campaign when we debated about the glyphosate <coughs> and, the, and, the, and, the, and the French broom I understood you you all were saying, we can do it differently, we can protect this precious watershed a different way. I support that, and I appreciate what Director Smallman said. This is a commitment I thought that you made to the community that you were going to find another way to protect the watershed without using glyphosate. I support that. That was the purpose of the letter that we provided to you from the Fel Felton Library friends. We want to find those ways to do it. For you to now say, well, we're not going to use glyphosate and we're going to let the, the scotch French broom grow, uh, I think is, is, uh, is, it really concerns me. And it really concerns me, the idea that we might possibly be selling off some of this public land that is in trust with the water district that we should be protecting. 
Thank you. Uh, Chuck? Um, yeah, two scary things about this. One is just what Jim mentioned at the last part. It, and I think I wrote down the quote actor, accurately. Is it in our best interest to own that property? Resoundingly, yes. You want to protect your wellheads. And the best way to protect them is to own the land for them. So that, okay, I don't know where that came from. And the other is to just pick a number, like it's a round number, okay, digits, like 5% and say we're going to have 5% or something. Okay, like that is what seems to kind of be in the ballpark of what Director Foltz is doing. With, without the analysis that it takes to justify that that's even possible to do. So let's, Stephanie, maybe find some areas where you can perhaps have some flexibility, but I don't believe there's enough flexibility in the system without losing staff. And thank you, Director Henry, for okay, recognizing the importance of staff and keeping experienced people on here and keeping an organization that, in my opinion, needs to have some sense of morale, okay, in a place that you're, they're valued and that they're past um, successes in keeping this place running at a pretty low cost for the geographic size and difficulties of doing it, um, I think we need to be appreciated for it. Hi, I'm Nancy Macy and uh, from Boulder Creek. Um, each of you has claimed and professed again and again your, the, how important the environment is to you um, and that you understand the interdependence of the watershed and the waterways. Uh, and the interdependence of all of our all the inhabitants, whether they're humans or not, that's great. And you can demonstrate that with the budget. Demonstrate it to everyone who believed you when you said that. Assure the local agencies and the other water districts that you wor must work closely with as the partners group. Uh, and assure the state and federal agencies that oversee the impacts of your actions. They especially must remain confident in the district's understanding and the desire of the district to uphold its environmental mandate. It is in your mandate. It is in your mission. Read the watershed management plan. So along with environmentally sound, scientifically based land management, don't get rid of it in the budget, it is vital to monitor steelhead in conjunction with the partners group as John Ricker wrote so eloquently in his letter to you, I hope you've read that letter and that you understand what he said. The district has to plan for long periods of drought. That's one reason the budget went up so much. We got to plan ahead for that and not respond, uh, you know, without thought, without planning. There are st state and federal steelhead and coho mandates. And without the, even the volunteer map monitoring that your budget would throw away, you may so undermine the district's environmental reputation that it will be required to create a habitat conservation plan. Ask Santa Cruz City how expensive that is and how long it takes. You don't want to have to do that. You want them to trust that you don't need one. Changing the district's water rights, like you are talking about doing, also depend upon the environmental credibility of the district. And it's, it's conceivable that those changes could be refused if this and other budget cuts undermine the district's reputation, the district's environmental credibility. Finally, please consider the fact that the sampling needs to be throughout the watershed. Don't get rid of it completely. Don't do part of it. You have to do the whole thing as has been happening for years. The reason for that is it's if you don't know what's going on in the areas that the district does not have an impact on, you're not going to know whether or not you are having an impact and where the impact is and what you can do to change it or fix it or amend it. And then you're in trouble with the feds and with the state. So you really need to look at avoiding adding costs to future budgets and you want to gain improved flexibility in managing water, and you want to demonstrate your environmental insight, I truly believe that some of you really believe that you are environmentalists, and I want to support that, because it is the watershed that creates the water, that provides the water. And you can if you can restore the budget for land management and for steelhead mo monitoring, this will be an example this will be a statement that you want to continue having a reputation 
that you are trustworthy in managing your water district because your water district depends upon the watershed and the waterways. So, thank you. That's what I want to say. Thank you. Anybody else? Deb? Yeah, Ed and I are on a fixed income, so I can really sympathize with you as the board are looking at. We can wish to do lots of things, and we can wish to do lots of really special and wonderful things and helpful things to our neighbors, but we have to evaluate what we can afford to do. And if we decide to do something because we, we feel it in our heart that it needs to be done, it means we have to give up something to be able to do it. And I believe that's the position this board is in. As far as I know, the district has always been in compliance with environmental requirements, so I don't know that our reputation is at stake here. Um, I think we spend a lot of, we have spent a lot of time and money making sure that the district is following all the environmental laws and meeting the requirements. And there are many, and they're very heavily regulated, so I have faith in the federal and state government that they are knowing what they're doing and that the district is knowing what it's doing. But I think it comes down to, if you want, if you want an array of things, even $90,000, it means giving up something. And what is it that you're willing to give up? to get that $90,000 for these special programs? Is it so many fire hydrants? Is it so many pipe replacements that are leaking that the guys have to keep going out constantly over and over and fixing? I mean, this is what we have to evaluate, and I appreciate the board looking at it. It doesn't hurt to question, to, to pose a question and have a discussion of what's it gonna look like if we do this? What's it gonna look like if we do this? I think that's really valuable information to have, and that's a good discussion starter. Thank you for doing it. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else in the public? Yes, sir. Uh, Don and Ellie, uh, you know, I have been your fishery biologist for 25 years until recently. Um, I take, a, a, not offense, but I, I really question the idea that fisheries monitoring is discretionary. You're putting in with a bunch of other stuff that uh, might be discretionary, but you still need to be part of the community, but fish monitoring is not really discretionary. Uh, if you look at other water districts and cities that that use water, they're all monitoring their fish populations. And they don't they don't do it because they you know it's just a discretionary thing. Uh, the Monterey Peninsula Water Management has fishery biologists on their staff that have been monitoring the Carmel River for <coughs> 30 years. Uh, the Santa Clara Valley Water District has fishery biologists on their staff that have been monitoring their watersheds. The, the, the city of Santa Cruz has a, has a fishery biologist on their staff now. Uh, who he, he's managing the fish monitoring program this year. Um, you, can't, you can't be in a, vi a vacuum. I sense that you, you don't really grasp the complexity of, of environmental regulations. Jen, Jen knows how difficult it is to get permits she has to deal with these environmental agencies. Um, since I've been working in this area for so long, I have so much experience, more experience than the people in the agencies. They respect what I have to say and they trust what I have to say. Um, that works to your benefit. It has worked for your benefit until recently when you, uh, you haven't had me involved in the Interti system. But when you, you lose that trust and you lose that confidence, uh, as an agency, then you start to think, well, what are we going to have to do to these people? How are we going to make sure they do the right thing? Well, they're, they're generally going to have you do more monitoring than you did before. Uh, <coughs> Lois mentioned, well, we need to put this out for an RFP. Well, I guess I have to defend that because that implies that I'm overcharging you. Um, I'm a local person. We have, I have a very small business. I use local biologists as subcontractors. Fortunately, I bought my house 20 year, more than 20 years ago, so my mortgage isn't very high. If I was paying what people have to pay to live here now, I would have to double my rates. Um, I worked for the Cambria Community Services District up until 2006, and my rate there at that time was $15 an hour more than I charge you folks 
to do the, the, the steelhead monitoring. Um, in 2002, the city of Santa Cruz decided to have someone else monitor the steelhead that year. Well, they paid another company three or four times as much as they were paying me, and they didn't get any habitat data at all. And then they decided, well, this is just too expensive. We're just going to drop it. <laughs> so for like four years, they didn't do any monitoring. But then the county brought them back into the, the system. And so they started contributing again to the monitoring. The other thing about putting out the bid is the data has been collected consistently for 20 years. We, I collect it the same way, and the people who work for me collect it the same way. So you can get a, uh, an accurate idea of how trends are going in the fish densities and the habitat. You hire somebody else, they're not going to use the same methods. It's, it's, not like, it's not precise like engineering. You're not trying to design a product that's going to work. It, it's different. So you change monitoring people, you're going to get different data that's not comparable <coughs> to the past. So I guess what I'm saying is that John Ricker has written you a letter where he put a lot of thought into it, and he has probably 30 to 40 years experience and what the game's like. So you should, you should really think hard about what, he, what he's saying there and what it really takes. Uh, you have these ideas of changing your water rights and starting to ship water around the watershed. That's, those are big changes. Those are really big changes environmentally. And the agencies have already expressed concern about that. So it can be done intelligently if you do it right. But you know, hiring people who have never worked in the watershed before, fishery biologists, hire them instead of someone who's worked here for 30 years. Well, I, I really, you, you guys didn't make that decision. The previous board and the previous water manager made that decision. You guys didn't. But uh, they're going to be looking at this very closely. And, and Nancy Macy mentioned this habitat conservation plan. That's a situation where you try to mitigate your impacts with a big plan. Well, that's going to be extremely expensive. And the district has tried to avoid that for many years. But I'm, I'm telling you, if you, if you just decide, well, we're not going to, we're going to keep track of the fish anymore, then that's going to tell the, the agencies that well, these people don't really care. They're that kind of water district now. We're going to have to really knuckle down on them. You know, we thought they were okay, but now that's not the case. So. Bill makes perfect sense to me about well, what do you really gain by cutting this twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars out of the budget uh, when you lose the goodwill, you lose the your reputation, your environmental reputation. This district, until recently, has had the best environmental reputation that I know of on the on the Central Coast. I worked for a lot of water districts, and this district was number one in my in my estimation. I've worked with a number of them. So, I mean, you can lose that reputation really quick through ignorance, not realizing. So these little nickels and dimes that you might save will end up costing you a lot more than you think. If, if, you, start, if you start hiring these other fisheries, larger firms from outside the area, instead of paying $75 an hour, you're going to be paying $250, easy. So... I guess that's all I have to say. I wasn't going to say anything tonight, but what do I have to lose? I mean, you're cutting me out anyway, so. Thank you. Unless I try to change your mind. Yeah. Anybody? Is that everybody? Okay. So, um, we'll move on to the consent agenda. <coughs> Just be clear about what the... I am not clear. Yeah, that's why I wanted to... Well, I thought we said, show us a couple of different scenarios. See what it'll do. Do you want me to list out kind of all the different things that I'm kind of looking for, like essentially yes-nos or yeah. somewhere in between yeah. this type of stuff? Yeah. Okay. He so wants flat or 5% yes. reduction. Okay. Good we'll, luck. We'll have to send it back to the department heads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll let department heads go through their budgets and see what we can come up with. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, it's just messing with the numbers. Well, I'm not going to mess. We're not going to mess with numbers we know that are not going to be able to meet. Correct. I mean, that's where we'll. No, no. Yeah. It, it's like it. 
I'm not saying you're going to be able to meet them. I'm, what I'm saying is just show what would happen if we are flat or if we reduce 5%. That's all. What would happen? How would you do it? I, I'm not saying that's something we're going to, you know, adopt. I understand that these conversations are uncomfortable and that everybody is looking at a potential change here. But everybody needs to remember, nothing has been decided yet. No. These are conversations that we're having that I believe the ratepayers of this district expect a board to have. And if not every year, certainly periodically. Uh, what I'm hearing from the folks that have spoken in favor of certain programs tonight is that we pay a little vig and we keep our reputation with folks. Um, okay, maybe that's classified as insurance uh, as opposed to anything else. I don't know. But it certainly seemed like that's the way it was coming across here is that if we don't do X, then we get treated like Y. And I would hope that everybody gets treated sort of fairly at that level, um, as long as they're following the laws and meeting the regulations and um, doing what they're supposed to be doing. I, I hope there isn't sort of special preferential treatment being given to one group or another based on how they might be perceived. Uh, well, that's yeah. weird. Well, again, you know, like I said before, you know, I think we need to to detail these four cuts that we discussed tonight and discuss them a little bit more. Just have a little bit more detail on them, so we can have a. They'll, they'll essentially be a whole list of the environmental yeah, yeah, yeah. ones, different yeah. things like the yeah. back truck, yeah, the all the different the, things. Yeah, yeah. But you know, you know, expenses for operations of the water and the water system, the yeah. water supply and treatment are going to come before water conservation. I mean. I, 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 I don't know how to tell you that. No, I mean, I, I mean, straightforward. Yeah. Health and safety comes first. I, I agree. And yeah. then you have to start looking at the lower hanging fruit. I mean, and that's where yeah. these yeah, other yeah. programs, and, and to, meet those, to meet that those budget cuts, Sure. it's going to have to be. And then, then the, the, you as the board, I guess, will make that decision. Yeah. And, and by the way, when I look at the leakage from um, uh, the last few years, um, <laughs> You know, we're sitting at a leakage percent. Well, leakage, I don't know if it's leakage, but produce versus well, sold. Unaccounted for water. Or, uh, yeah, leak versus sales, sales and. So, and I mean, again, I'm just production. a dumb board member. So I just look at the percentage and I see 25%. Now, if we roll in the consultants that we hired last year again and try to get our leak percentage down to more like, I don't know, 15%. It's a huge savings in terms of water production. I, I agree. They're, they're, so, so, so why why would we um, only do a leak detection once every three years? That to me is a huge ROI that can be well, justified. See, you, I don't think you'll see that same turn in doing it every year. So doing it every three years is it was I, is more of what you'll get. I, we need to I do is replace I the pipe. Well, I, okay. We so that is how fix we leaks. We need to replace the pipe. So, how do we get as much money well, to do that? I agree. <laughs> well, and again, again, I don't, I don't want to sound like a broken record, though. You know what, record. though? Every, the, you know one. Robert's rules? All board members get to speak before you get to speak again. If that one, okay. And maybe nobody wants to, but I, I just want you to be aware of that. I, I, I will all right. I'm sorry. Okay. So did you have something you wanted to say? No, 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 I'm, I'm good. I mean, I think the, the staff understands the direction that we're trying to provide as far mm -hmm. as this is what we'd like to see in a, in a budget. The, the what ifs, you know, let's take a look at the what ifs and, and what happens, right? And, and, uh, oh, right. So what, that's, what, what would happen? So I, don't, I, don't <laughs> keep, I, can, I just don't do want to keep rehashing the same no, cuts that. that we've talked about and made and implemented already. I yeah. You know, I, I, an hour and a half of the same conversation is really not going to get us anywhere. I, well, well I, okay. I haven't had a chance. Okay. Okay. Um, so I don't think we're going to be using consultants like consultants were used in the past. We had consultants 
in the past who d who consulted co cost a certain amount of money and then it was totally dropped. Nobody even followed through with it. We have an engineer now. Why do we need to be getting a bunch of consultants? Um, I, I mean, I granted, he's got to learn to deal with us. Good luck. Um, but it's the same number. It, it, hmm? There's no difference in the effective number of contract professional services from 18, 19, 19, 20. It's 1.31 to 1.35. Same number. So, but, but, but we won't be using, con okay, well, we're going to not gonna be using consultants. like we yeah. use. Yeah. Okay, Bob. Uh, uh, okay. No, yeah. it, the consultants, again, with our in-house engineering and construction project, less money, what the IBSC is going to get cut. And that's a capitalized cost, so the, the type of, the type I mean, of consulting is actually like the so consultants. Educated, yeah. fix our procurement, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's money, you know, there's a lot of little, these things that are going to save Again, I mean, quite a lot, a lot of money. I mean, I'll, I'll go through it again. No. Actually, the and next meeting, you understand that? You, well, no, well, I will. Uh, uh, to to, to ask, make an estimated cost of, um, and then you know that we yeah we have <coughs> staff costs. But again, I, you know, I went I already went through all, all those areas where I you know we're going to save a lot of money. That needs to be to what I. Okay, I'm just going to just finish this and make quite the finish. I, I don't want, when we come back and talk about this, I don't want to sit here and say, oh, we can cut this off the budget, and then we can meet our needs with that, without talking about the money that we're going to save with our in-house and other um, costs and incentives to save money, without talking about it. I understand what you're Yeah. But yeah. I, I you know, but those numbers... Because I still think that we're with the in-house engineer, and with that, we're going to save a lot of money, and it's going to it's going to it's going to pay for itself in the big time. So okay. I mean, you know, I'm just I'm just saying, you know, I don't I don't want to come back here and say, oh, we can cut ninety thousand or cut this. And that, We've uh, oh, come on. Yeah. Don't keep repeating yourself. Okay. Come up with a new okay. idea. Okay. okay, I'll be happy to hear. All right, I'm okay. done. Okay. All right. So can we move on now? Yes, you have clarity now. Yes, we have clarity. Yeah. <laughs> can we move we on clarity. to the consent agenda and minutes? <laughs> clarity. Can you uh, the, there's no questions with minutes. And and everybody was, oh, you listened. I listen, yeah. Darren, yeah. it's been nice having you with us. <laughs> Hope you stick around for the end of the show. <laughs> well, we'll talk tomorrow. <laughs> so, any questions about the minutes? That's just fine, right? They're, they're, one, they're really good, thank you. I'm sure ready. You've got a lot of work into it. So okay. Really so, um, what about the bill pay? Anybody have a question on the bill pay? Oh, yeah, uh, there was one. Can you have one? It oh. had to, yeah, well, only one I remember off the top of my head, and I don't want to look for it. It was the, the, the 25000 to the, uh, the elections. Uh, oh, yeah. Santa Cruz Elections Board or something. What's? Pay for the elections. The school. Yeah, it for costs a lot of money. Yeah. They pay, they charge by the vote. They charge us by the vote. Yeah. Register voters. Yeah, so it's like 60 yeah. grand or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. we increased the number of registered voters yeah. in the last yeah. election by 700, I think. 500. Yeah. It's a lot. So, yeah. That's the cost yeah. of the election. So, and I but see. it's a group election, so it's a lot less, so we're going to have a special election. Yeah. yeah. Special election. If we have a special weeks. election, you I could we add 10,000 to that. Okay, all right. So that was my memorable question. Just going, what the hell is that for? Yeah, they break it right down by the vote. If you have any more, you can always email me. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And some of the bigger items are like the blue tank and <coughs> the well. And yeah. It's going to be a whole lot more of those coming through. That, yeah. So there's going to be more of that.
So. Chair, I'm to clarify, you're in the district reports section of the agenda now? Um, I lost my place. <laughs> um, yes. Yes, we're in the report section. Yes. So, operation, uh, the department reports now? Is that where we are? We're department status okay. reports? Um, Is that where we are? Yes. Yes. I'd, I'd just like to bring up that our next meeting will be uh what is it may may, may 2nd mm -hmm. we also will have uh, on that agenda the appointment of the possible uh, director to the board mm -hmm. and i was wondering what the board's thoughts would be to maybe change the location to highlands park do we think we're going to have or do we just have it here we have to have a special meeting to change the location that's not on the agenda um just a thought I'm not sure if we're planning on a large crowd of people to that meeting or not, or we just have it here and stand in room only. We That's the board. Pitchforks and <laughs> tomatoes. Oh, my opinion. Okay, here. Here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the board. Just the board's pleasure. Okay. That works for me. Okay. Did you have anything else you wanted? No, I was just, I just wanted to get that in because we would have had to have a scheduled special meeting. Okay. And so, this way here it works out, we don't have to have a special meeting. So, finance want to talk. Do you guys have anything to talk about? Otherwise everything's going kind of according to, to budget and plan. And, and where's James? Uh, James has been yeah. sick all week with a bad cold. Oh. Really sick. Yes, really sick. So are you going to do operations? Well, there's anything. <laughs> I might know something about it. You knew, you do, huh? I know, I say I might. You might. <laughs> if you have any questions, I'll be able to. Nothing? No, no questions. No, no questions? Okay, environmental. Do you have anything to say? I have anything to say. Okay. Audience. Uh, I have a question for the environmental. Okay. Report. Jen, you say that uh, staff continues to participate with the Technical Advisory Committee of the Friends of the Fountain Library. Is that you? Yes. Okay. And you, it, it also says that meetings are held several times a month. Is that your time or is that district's time? Are we paying you to go to those meetings? Well, there was a period when we were looking at the easement that those were held several, you know, there were several there for a few months. Um, that's not correct. I haven't been to one in months. Oh, okay. I just, well, that's what it says. So that's yeah. Right. <coughs> so I should change that, sorry. Mm -hmm. So you're not Thank currently you. attending those? I haven't been attending those. Advisors. I go when I have a availability yes. if, I, if it's scheduled during the time. Usually it's in the afternoon, like right around 5.30, so it's on my time. Okay. Or can be on district time, depending on which meeting. Thank you. Okay. Uh, legal. I don't have anything to add beyond what's in my report. Okay. Um, committee reports. I, yeah, on, on the environmental uh, committee, I did want to um, highlight one item that I think will be coming to the board soon. That's the Zionity Creek um, project that um, we discussed in the Environmental Committee meeting. I did want to also highlight that um, the, the reason it probably isn't here today is that I had some issues with the ease, with the agreement that we were uh, proposing to sign. The other two committee members that were in attendance did not, um, but I believe Rick is off to see what we can do to modify it. Right. Well, uh, legal counsel is reviewing that. Um, I'm still trying to find out if, uh, if the other agencies are going to sign those. Yeah, the, there's a there's an indemnification clause in there, and it was a little fuzzy about who was responsible for maintenance. Um, it seemed like we we're responsible for long term maintenance on it, um, and uh, you know, I'd sort of like to see if we can reduce the unfunded liabilities that we have. 
I still want I still wanted to see the project go forward, as did everybody else. But if we can figure out a way to make it um, palatable to a more palatable district from a cost and indemnification risk point of view, it would be great. Um, I would imagine all the rest of them will sign as is, right? So they have bigger sure. law, they have bigger legal budgets than we do. And didn't it wasn't um, they want to put a presentation on the no, the May second potentially and that was the um, who went for that on the the R C D one that wants wants to come up and put a presentation on the full board of what the project is. Yeah, it'll be great um, on that. So uh, hopefully we'll have uh, an answer by then. And we'll have a review. Legal will have a chance to review everything and get back to the board. Basically, basically putting logs into the Creek. Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, um, the state cutting. Yeah. Hmm. It's been fully funded. Yeah. It, right. It's mm -hmm. it's fully funded for the project maintenance, or if there is any maintenance, who's responsible? Mm -hmm. is, right. I think what what the plan is is you cut trees down, uh, sort of simulate the natural. Uh, yeah. Yep. I remember that. Right. And it goes into the creek, and then the fix them into the creek mm -hmm. so that hopefully they won't move. Mm -hmm. um, and it mm -hmm. creates a much better cover. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to report? Uh, no. Just the high, okay. The high um, and did you have your hand? Sorry. No. Oh, okay. So, are we done here? Um, I do, did want to thank um, uh, putting the uh, Court of Appeals Holloway v. Vieira decision into the uh, packet this time. Somebody, somebody did, me. so thank you for doing that. Um, I think it's important that we, um, yeah, that we um, keep the community appraised of what's happening on the, uh, on the legal front. Anybody else? No? Okay. Um, you want to adjourn this meeting? And the time is? 8.59. 8.59, thank you.